Homemade guacamole is easy to prepare and making it from scratch tastes so much better. In this recipe, I'll show you how to cut an avocado and prevent it from browning too quickly. I prefer to use Haas avocados because they have a soft and creamy texture, making it really easy to crush. They also have a nice nutty and slightly sweet flavor. When you're selecting avocados at the store, make sure there's no blemishes or noticeable soft spots on the surface. I have two ways that I like to check for ripeness. The first is to remove the stem. If you can't easily take it off, then it's not ripe. You should be able to just remove it with your fingertips, and if it's green underneath, then it's a good indication that it's ready, and if it's brown, then it's going to be overripe. The second way to check for ripeness is just place the avocado in the palm of your hand and just give it a light squeeze. If you feel that it yields to that moderate pressure, then it's ripe and ready. If you find that the avocados aren't ripe and ready to use, you can place them in a paper bag with a banana or an apple. Those fruits emit an ethylene gas that's going to speed up the ripening process, which takes about one to two days. To cut the avocado, make sure you remove the stem if you haven't done so already. Then starting at the stem end, just make a small cut until you feel the seed. And then just hold the knife steady and rotate the avocado around using your hand. And then once you get back to the stem, you're done. Rotate, and then you've cut them in halves lengthwise. To remove the pit, I like to place a paper towel in my hand just to steady it, get a nice firm grip, and then use the back of the knife to just give a light tap. And then just twist it, and now you've lifted out the seed. Now you don't want to grab the seed because it's really slippery and you can cut your finger. So all you have to do is just take your thumb and your pointer finger and just squeeze. And it just releases that seed out into your hand. If you don't feel comfortable holding the avocado while cutting, I'll show you another method. Just place the avocado lengthwise flat on the board, remove that stem, and then just Cut into the stem down to where you feel the pit, and then hold the knife steady and just rotate the avocado around the blade until you reach the top of the stem again. To remove the pit, if it's not too soft, all you have to do is just kind of squeeze the sides a little bit and then just pop the pit into your hand. Another way you can use a spoon to scoop out the pit. Now we're ready to mash the avocados. I'm going to transfer two of the avocados to the bowl. Just use a spoon to scoop out as much of the pulp as possible. Season the avocados with a half teaspoon of kosher salt. The salt is going to add a nice savory flavor as well as the coarse granules are going to help break down the flesh while we mash it with the fork. I like this method because I can control the texture. We want to crush it until it has a smooth consistency. To add some contrast and texture, I'm going to add some diced avocados. We already have them cut in half, so all you have to do is use the knife to just cut half inch thick slices and then turn the avocado and cut it into half inch thick cubes. Just scoop out the flesh, add the pieces directly to the bowl. Just stir a few times to incorporate it together. As you can see, you have a nice variety of creaminess with some chunky pieces. If you prefer an even chunkier, more rustic texture, alternatively, you can add all of the avocados to a bowl, then use a potato masher to crush it until it's all combined. As you may know, when avocados are cut or mashed, they begin to turn brown over time. This is due to an enzyme in the flesh called polyphenol oxidase. When the enzyme reacts with the oxygen in the air, it turns the pigment brown. 
However, there are ways to slow down this reaction. Cut the limes in half down the center. Place the lime cut side down into the juicer so that when you squeeze it, it doesn't fly into your eye. Add three tablespoons of lime juice to the avocado mixture. Stir until everything is combined. Lime juice is not only gonna give a really nice bright and citrusy flavor, but it also acts as an antioxidant. It contains vitamin C or ascorbic acid, which is going to react with the oxygen in the air first instead of the enzymes in the flesh. This is gonna slow down the rate of browning. Another way to slow down the avocados from browning is to cover it with a physical barrier. I like to use plastic wrap and just press it straight down so it's actually touching the pulp. You want to remove as much air pockets as possible. This is gonna keep it nice and green while we prepare the other ingredients. I like to use Roma tomatoes because they have a nice ripe and juicy flavor with just a hint of acidity. Cut the tomato in half lengthwise using the claw so you don't cut your fingertips. Then cut it into quarters. Use the knife to cut the seeds out down to the stem. Cut the tomato into quarter inch thick strips. Stack the slices together and cut it into quarter inch dice. To add some crunch and colorful pop of color into the dip, I'm going to cut a red onion. Cut the root end off, but make sure it stays intact so it doesn't fall apart. Turn it around and cut the other side. Place the cut side down on the board and then cut through the root end. Remove the outer papery skin. Cut through the center lengthwise. Rotate the onion and cut an eighth thick pieces. Red onions tend to be a little bit sweeter than white or yellow, but those can also be used. We want to make sure that we cut this into really fine dice because you don't want a super strong sulfurous taste. Just a little crunch. We need a quarter cup. I like to give this one last rough chop so that we make sure they're even in small sized pieces. To add a little kick of heat, I'm going to use jalapeno peppers. Cut off the stem, then lengthwise down the center. Just be really careful, I could already smell the spice, the capsaicin or the compounds that cause that little bit of burning and heat sensation is all contained in this white area called the pith and the ribs. So we're going to want to carefully just remove that out. Unless you like it spicy, you can keep it in. Cut the peppers lengthwise into really thin strips. Turn it and mince into small pieces. We need one tablespoon. Mm, to add some fresh herbaceous notes to the dip, I'm going to cut some cilantro. I like to take a bunch like this after I've washed it, and then you just use the blade to cut off the leaves. And then you can just pick off any leaves with your fingertips and chop using the fanning motion. We need one tablespoon. To add some dimension to the really rich and creamy avocado mixture, I'm going to add some minced garlic. Just cut off both of the ends. Use the side of the knife to give it a quick smash. This helps remove the peels a lot easier. Make sure to mince it nice and fine so that you don't get big chunks of garlic stuck in your teeth. <laughs> we need one teaspoon. I'm going to remove the plastic wrap and as you can see, it's kept the flesh nice and green. We're going to add a half a cup of the diced tomato, a quarter cup of the diced red onion, one tablespoon of minced jalapeno, one tablespoon of chopped cilantro, and one teaspoon of the minced garlic. Just stir everything together until it's combined. This is ready to serve, or you can store it in the refrigerator for up to two days. 
I would place it in an airtight container and then just squeeze a little bit of lime juice on top, then place a piece of plastic wrap so that there's no air in between, and then cover. Another option is to place the mixture in a resealable plastic bag, squeeze out all of the air, and then close it, and then place that into an airtight container. That's gonna give you an extra layer of protection. Right before serving, I like to garnish with a little bit of freshly chopped cilantro. That's a nice little pop of color. I'm going to serve this with some crunchy tortilla chips, but you can also use it as a topping for tacos, fajitas, or even avocado toast. If you're looking for another appetizer to share, check out my shrimp ceviche right here. It always disappears fast. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind guacamole, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. This is not gonna last long. <laughs>